Dire wolves were giant dogs that lived 125,000 to 9,500 years ago. This spanned the late Pleistocene and early Holocene. These prehistoric predators were similar to today's wolves, but a bit larger in size, with a sturdier, more robust frame. Two species of dire wolf existed that we know of. A Nasian dirus gildei weighed 60 kilograms, or 132 pounds, and a Nasian dirus dirus was slightly larger at about 68 kilograms, or 150 pounds. In comparison, today's gray wolves, Canis lupus, averaged 40 kilograms, or 88 pounds. Although they were a similar size to modern wolves, dire wolves had bigger teeth and a greater bite force. This was likely an adaptation to the prey species available to them at the time and the need to bring down larger animals. Recently, scientists have sequenced the genomes of dire wolves and compared them to gray wolves. To their surprise, the two were not closely related. It was originally assumed that dire wolves and gray wolves were genetically similar with a shared lineage. However, the last common ancestor of these two canines was 5.7 million years ago. Dire wolves are more closely related to jackals than they are to actual wolves. But with such striking similarities to gray wolves, this is a classic example of convergent evolution. A case where two separate species evolve independently from one another, but emerge with similar characteristics due to the similar nature of their environments. So, what happened to the dire wolves? Whilst dire wolves were certainly the top dogs in North America for more than 100,000 years, by 9,500 years ago they faced extinction. They may have looked, sounded, and behaved like gray wolves, but they lacked one key element in the gray wolf's repertoire that could have saved them from extinction, and that was adaptability. Dire wolves hunted specific prey, and their extinction followed the loss of the megafauna from North America. Whilst gray wolves evolved in the harsher climates of Eurasia, giving them a greater ability to adapt before traveling across to North America, the dire wolves did not. Instead, they were highly adapted to the North American climate and all that it had to offer. It is also clear from scientific studies that dire wolves never interbred with gray wolves or coyotes. This could have given their genetic lineage a chance, but it was not to be. So, if dire wolves had survived past the early Holocene, would they have survived the world we live in today? To answer this question, we need to look at their habitat, climate, and food source and compare them to what's available today. Firstly, habitat. Dire wolves were endemic to North and South America and parts of East Asia. Their fossils have been found all over the United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic coasts and central and southern regions. They seem to have occupied a range of habitats. These include open plains and grasslands, forested mountainous regions of North America, arid savannas in South America, and even the steppes of Eastern Asia. It is likely that they followed their prey to these geographical locations and that there were some limiting barriers to their geographical expansion, such as the extreme cold of the far north. Some speculate that dire wolves originated in North America owing to the greatest number of fossils found there. More potential ancestors and fossils dating back earlier than those found elsewhere. It is assumed that, from North America, dire wolves dispersed and spread southwards into South America via the Andean Corridor. This would have most likely have occurred during a glacial period because the climate during an interglacial would have consisted of tropical rainforest rather than open, arid savanna. Today, there would be similar habitats available most of the open plains or forested regions of North America are segregated into protected national parks. If dire wolves existed today, they would likely be confined to these parks, and their numbers would have to be limited to avoid prey overkill. So what about climate? How different was the late Pleistocene climate from today? Did the dire wolf adapt to any environmental fluctuations? During the late Pleistocene, North America experienced significant fluctuations in climate. In the beginning, it was relatively mild and stable, similar to that of today. However, as the epoch progressed, the climate became increasingly colder and more variable, which repeated glacial advances and retreats. During the peak of the last glaciation, approximately 20,000 years ago, 
Ice sheets covered much of Canada and the northern United States. The northern regions of the continent were generally cold and dry, while the southern regions were cooler and wetter than they are today. Temperatures in these regions were significantly colder than they are today. For example, in parts of the Arctic, temperatures may have been as much as 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, or 36 to 54 degrees Fahrenheit colder than current temperatures. This might mean if dire wolves existed today, they would struggle with the warmer temperatures, or it might mean that their geographical range would change. They may head northwards where it's colder but prey species nearer the Arctic may not be plentiful enough. If they could cross into parts of Siberia where the temperatures are much colder than in North America, they may be more adapted to the climate. Siberia offers a range of habitats that would suit dire wolves such as forests, tundra, and vast expanses of grassland. It is already home to wolves, suggesting that it could also be suitable for dire wolves. Species that could be considered prey for dire wolves also live in Siberia's wilderness. These include reindeer, elk, and even bears. So this leads to the final question of diet. Would there be suitable food for dire wolves to survive today? Dire wolves were carnivores. Fossilized evidence suggests that their predominant prey was the horse. Those available at the time were western horses, which were larger than today's wild horses and more like today's plain zebra. To a lesser degree, dire wolves also ate dwarf proghorn, giant ground sloths, bison, camels, and occasionally mastodons and mammoths. They were similar to gray wolves in their feeding behavior, except for their killing technique, in which they held on to their prey for longer during the kill. Although ground sloths no longer exist today, horses and their relatives, as well as bison, can be found in the Americas. These animals could be considered prey for the dire wolves if they live today. They typically fed on prey much larger than themselves, which suggests that they hunted in packs and likely had organized social structure in these groups. Towards the end of the Pleistocene and into the Holocene, many fossilized specimens are found with a greater amount of tooth breakage. This suggests that they ate a lot of the carcass including the bone, perhaps more so than in previous generations, as competition for food became fierce with the changing climate. However, the dire wolves were unlikely to have been directly in competition with other great predators of the Pleistocene epoch. Hunting at the same time would have been saber-toothed cats, but these felids would have preferred to hunt in more closed habitats than the dire wolves. Scientists have noted changes in the size of dire wolves over time. As the climate fluctuated, so too did the size of the dire wolves. When the climate was warmer, fossilized skulls found in La Brea tar pits were smaller. Scientists believe this was in response to the stressed ecosystem under the warmer conditions, resulting in stunted growth of predators. If dire wolves survive today, they may look significantly different from their ancestors. They may be smaller and more agile. They would likely hunt the same species that today's wolves hunt and occupy similar niches. At around the same time that the large predators were struggling to find enough food, coyotes dramatically changed their feeding behavior. This was in response to a changing environment and the reduction in and ultimately extinction of many herbivores. Coyotes shifted to eat more plant material, smaller prey species, and utilize more of the carcass. This flexibility and adaptability resulted in the coyote's survival. The same cannot be said for the dire wolf. In conclusion, it would be difficult for dire wolves to survive today. They were once apex predators a canine to be feared, but the climate change wiped out their prey and they soon followed. There would likely be some areas on Earth today that would provide suitable climate, habitat, and prey for dire wolves. If they were to be brought back to life, their numbers would have to be heavily managed, as would the sanctuaries or reserves in which they lived. They could decimate wild herbivores and outcompete the native predators that did survive the shift from the Pleistocene to the Holocene. Although the dire wolves appear similar to gray wolves, they are only distantly related, and it was the gray wolf that made it through the changing earth, not the dire wolf. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.